session for um, reading specialists. So what we are going to cover in here now is this bottom portion of the agenda. We looked through um, connecting how this pertains to me, and the focus of this session today was only on the reading specialist, how to make it work for you. We talked about creating a culture of co-teaching, and then we are looking at some alternate pathways to success, sandboxes and groups. And if you're in my breakout session, this is really what we're more focused on. Your deeper dive that you have chosen if you're in my session is the how-tos for reading specialists, your course, and groups. So uh, just to make sure you got in the one that you wanted to be in, I am going to share the link to the agenda again in this meeting. Um, if you're hearing somebody in Lindsay's session, then you have um, got two windows of Google Meet open. Yeah, so just go on and go up to your tabs or maybe even it even fell behind that window and make sure you don't have two sessions open because I'm not, I'm not hearing anybody from the other session because I ended the call. All right, or it's possible some, no, I would hear them, so we're all muted. All right, let's hop back in the agenda real quick. We're in my breakout session. Um, we have 20 minutes to do a little bit of a technical uh, deeper dive. We're doing more of a how-to in my session. And so I just want to give you the heads up now that at about two minutes till noon um, or a minute till or whatever, you can click on this contact hours evaluation and make sure you complete this. Um, your presenter, my name is Rosemary Jane, and then you can finish this as you normally do so that you can get your contact hours for your participation in today's PD. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that you are connected to your um, Thrive Reading Specialist group. So make sure you're connected to Thrive Group. And that is this link. Now, if you get that and it says private access, you can't get in, I'm gonna drop the join code now. Like if you can't get in it, uh, you, you will click on at the top groups, my groups, and then you'll click on join a group and enter that access code. That will get you into the reading specialist group. All right. And I lost it. One second. There we go. Lots and lots of groups in this district. Okay. So making sure that you're in there. I just wanna point out to you that you guys can start to post discussions in this group. I noticed that was an unused tool. So if we wanna add a discussion, what we're gonna say is reading specialist um, PD discussion. So I'm gonna leave this, um, I'm gonna create this and add your thoughts, ideas here. I'm going to just create this discussion so that you guys have a space, maybe as you're processing or when this meeting is over and the chat is closed, that you can hop in and drop your thoughts on this. Updates, let's just go over real quickly. Updates, I call those for the good of the order, meaning you wanna share an announcement, a resource or something with everybody right now. So you would post an update. Updates stay organized in chronological order, but if you wanna have a targeted discussion around something that you wanna be able to revisit, Go and have that in the discussion portion of the group. Now, the last one that I wanna show you guys, I love albums, but in interest of time, down to resources. Anything in these resources can be pulled over to your course. Now, I wanna start with addressing the people who don't have a course yet. If you just joined our sandbox course, let's see if anybody got in, members, Yep, lots of you have joined. So in a moment, I'm going to make sure that all of you are admins in this group, in this course. But let's say that you want to take something from your resources, and I'll let you know right now, I'm not very familiar with your particular resources. But let's say you want to pull this into that sandbox group. You would go over here to the gear, and you would do add to course. Please ignore the number of courses you see I'm enrolled in. It's a stupid amount. So I'm gonna go down and find my reading specialist course. 
where'd it go? So see the Reading Specialist Sandbox? That's the name of our course. You can check that, but then you should create a folder. So I'm only gonna put things that I wanna add from resources in my Sandbox folder. So add. Okay, that was a very quick look at being um, a member of the Reading Specialist Group. Follow along with updates that are posted chronologically. You can respond or vote if the polls are posted. And um, dis discussions can be for those more targeted conversations. So everybody after this, feel free to add anything you want to this or if you're watching this recording later. Resources are the materials added um, and can be pulled over. And one thing that Lindsay asked me yesterday is can I have my problem of the days uh, problems of the day added to resources and I said absolutely absolutely yes so Amy I know that you provide such awesome materials around spire your foundations training um, I got to join in on that for a little while so if there's something you want added just go ahead and build it in our sandbox course or, or build a link to it in our sandbox course so Amy I'm gonna spotlight you so Amy H's um, folder. So you would create your folder. You can color code it. Um, and then you'll go into that and you'll start adding your materials. You'll either pull them over from your reading specialist um, group resources, maybe the K, uh, the Thrive, what is it called? ELA headquarters, maybe resources from there. You can pull them into your sandbox folder and you can play around with how you want to display things to teachers or excuse me, teachers and students. Um, because the Google Classroom question was, um, it's kind of hotly debated right now. One, I want to validate and let you know that no one expects you to change your practices overnight. And two, that we trust you as educators to select the best tools for your students for their learning experience. We do need you, though, to hub everything in Schoology. So I've created a template that you can add, and you simply go to Add Materials. And don't worry, this is being recorded, so I'll be able to share it later. Click on in your sandbox course or folder, click on add materials, import from resources. And I built a Google template just for teachers like you who are going to use Google Classroom in conjunction with Schoology. I took some of the work out of it for you. So all you have to do is import from resources and go to group. Now it's actually not in the top section, it's under school resources. So you can collapse that if you need to. And um, I also have a five minute overview video of importing resources. So if you need that later, I'll send that to you. But if you just look down to the Cincinnati Public Schools page, this right here, this folder for teachers, templates and materials you can use now. If you click on that, the third link down is information on my Google Classroom. Um, and I believe it was, I believe it was Mary. Um, sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. But this is what I meant by don't put a link out of context. So I'm going to pull this in and show you what I mean. Import that over here. And I set up this template to one, display in line so nobody misses the information, and two, to be customizable. I'm going to do a very quick how to with editing and customizing your template. Click on the gear, click edit. Now, it does take a moment to load when it is text heavy or especially image heavy. So don't feel like it's broken or not working. It's just pulling in all of that to, uh, to the front to the editing format again. So it usually feels like um, an unreasonable amount of time, right? But here, before you know it, it appears. So just be patient. All right, this is what we're thinking of. I saw a recent post called Empathy in Design. We have to put ourselves in the seat of our parents and students at home. So if you just post a link to your Google Classroom without context, then you are not considering what that experience is like for the teacher, or excuse me, for the parent or child at home. So this heading says, my Google Classroom. Students are completing work in my Google Classroom. Click on the image below to go to my Google Classroom. And guess what, guys? I made it clickable for you. I'll show you the template when it's done. And see below for more information for students and parents. This is a best practice in remote learning. You should always include information for both your student and your parents. I did a larger font type for students, and I left a bracket. So pay attention to the brackets. For whatever hey, Rosemary. I 
hate to interrupt you in the chat. A bunch of us are saying, we don't see the sandbox course, even when I refreshed, but when I try to go load it again, it's telling me I'm already in it, but I can't get to it. So when you said like, so I could try to link things, it's not letting us yeah. get in. So um, I will just finish the overview of what you can do in it. And then we'll make sure, I, I don't know if you saw, but I showed that I see members. Don't worry if you can't get in yet. I'm gonna switch all those settings in about another minute. So just bear with me. Um, you don't have to be in the sandbox. As a matter of fact, if you were trying to be in the sandbox right now while I'm showing you this, um, then you probably lose some of the some of what I'm sharing. So pay, um, do pay attention when you pull in templates that are shared on the Cincinnati Public Schools uh, resources that you watch out for these brackets and put your custom information in for your students, but then also make sure that you have information for your parents because if you're gonna have content in Google Classroom, parents have a different experience than students in accessing that. So here's another thing that I added because we had a very savvy little sixth grade student who realized that he could unenroll himself from his teacher's Google Classroom. Mom could come over and say, let me see if you've done all your work. He could open the class where he did his work, but the class where he didn't do his work was just not there. Mom's busy, she's getting her work done, and the kid got around having to do his work. Well, we added the information for um, students. If you haven't joined yet, follow these steps. If parents see that you have a Google Classroom and here's the join code, that gives them a little bit better of a of a way for the parent to make sure the child has joined and is in your Google Classroom correctly. So even if we're not talking about a misbehaving student, but just keeping the parent informed for how the students join, make sure that you add your custom Google Classroom code here. I'm very familiar with Google Classroom. Um, I like it as a tool when you don't have an LMS option, but um, if you're using it within the context of the LMS, please make sure your code is included in your template. All right. So I'm gonna hit um, save changes, and I'm just gonna pretend I customized that. Now watch this, I click on that, and boom, it takes me straight into my Google Classrooms. So the work is done for you in this template being easy for you to use. Now I'm gonna hop back into the Sandbox course, and if you look on your agenda, I did include the join code. But if you can't find it, let's address that first. So thank you, Amy, for calling that out on behalf of the people who were having trouble. Let's say you entered the code, right? I'll duplicate the problem. Join a course. Ah, I need to grab the code. You may receive a message that appears like this. You can't enroll yourself in a course you're already a member of. One shortcut that I like to use is I just hold down on a PC, um, Control F. It brings up a little search bar and I can type in reading. And as soon as I do that, it actually takes me to my reading specialist sandbox. If you're in a lot of courses called reading, you might have to put specialist. But then you just need to click on section one. To make it even easier for you, if you did get the red bar message that you're already a member, I'm gonna drop the course URL so you can just click it and go. Um, reading Specialist Sandbox. All right, so you should just be able to click on that and it launches your Sandbox course. And I'm gonna close out a few extra links. I find that Google Meetings don't work as well when you have too many tabs open. There we go. All right, so I'm in my sandbox course. I'm gonna go in right now and start making all of you administrators because I want you to have full editing rights. We're gonna have this be a shared sandbox course. So you can actually see as I'm doing it, as I click your name and make you an admin, if all you do is refresh your screen, you'll now be in your sandbox and you'll be able to add your folder. Please put it by your first and last name. Um, similar to how Lindsay and I did. And as you keep joining, I'm just gonna keep making you admins. Also too, if your peer, if, if your colleagues, a reading specialist was not able to attend today and they do this, any one of you who are now an admin can make anyone else an admin. So let's say that one of your friends who's a reading specialist gets this recording later and wants to join, they don't have to reach out to me. Anyone in here can make a new member an admin. So we're co-administering this course together. Some good group norms when you co-administer a course together, 
And this can be something you duplicate later if you want to transition to Lindsay's model, is that you should have folders that you are agreed upon are distinctly yours and distinctly the other person's. So I am not going to go and make changes in Lindsay's folder. But then you can also have shared space. And I demonstrated that with an inline page. So I'm going to click edit on this. All of you have editing rights. What you should not do when we are co-administering a course is you should not alter somebody else's content. This is just a simple way. You can use the dash key at the top to make a little dotted line between your shared content. And you can see I gave some placeholders. Your content goes here. So as you build anything in your course that maybe you want to copy and paste to share, you can copy and paste it, then click Save Changes, and then we all get to see a little spotlight. I really want to say that we've, we've got to find ways to better celebrate the work one another is doing. So whether or not you've just found a new way to make sure your Google Classroom is going to work for parents in Schoology, great. Share that. You can just type it up. You don't have to have pictures and all that stuff. I just like to do the extra, the extra fun stuff. Um, but whatever you want to say, why don't you, you could even say something like, hey, everybody, click on my folder. Um, it's just a way for you to show that. Now, why is this different than an update? You can actually post an update in here and say the exact same thing, and you can link directly to your folder. But the reason I shared this is just for a little preview for you. Um, when you build on a page in Schoology, you can take all of that and just literally copy and go to updates and paste, and you get all of those fun, rich text editing and embedded pictures. I get people ask me all the time, how do I make such fun updates? And that's, that's it, that's my trick. I just build it on a page and copy and paste it to an update. So if you guys want to make op updates that pop, maybe if you do start co-administering the course with your teachers, you can add these kind of fun and engaging updates, where maybe this picture isn't a Bitmoji, but a picture of a book that links me directly to the text. And it can be in these updates. I will say that in Schoology, if you cannot co-administer with another teacher, up here at the top, um, you can't get in their course, and the only place that you have to build is our sandbox, please create a group for your students. You get full rights on your group. You're allowed to create it, and you're allowed to add any students or staff members that you want. The power of groups is, oops, the power of groups is that you can um, have a space for sharing information with your students and maybe the teachers on your team. You can post updates, you can post um, targeted discussions, and you can even share resources. But many of you do not directly input grades into PowerSchool on behalf of your students. The classroom teacher does that. There is really no need for you to have your own course, not your own course. When we add additional courses, we are adding additional tiles for our students. And here's what their experience turns into. When they log into Schoology and they click on courses, Schoology was designed with a student in mind. And a typical student in a younger grade doesn't have more than 12 courses, so it works very well. But as we add additional courses for reading specialists and gifted intervention specialists and my after school club, please don't add courses. Those additional roles are appropriate to add groups. Courses, um, if you're a student, if you keep adding them, I had a SANS teacher reach me and reach out to me and say, Can you please help us get the message out that people have to stop adding courses to my students' course load? Because a young child might have to go in and click courses and then click my courses and then have to be a proficient enough reader to find the name of their course in alphabetical order. When you add an additional course that is not part of their power school roster, you are actually making the navigation problem more difficult for your students. Everything I showed you with Google Classroom, you can also host through a group. So if you're not going to connect with your um, general ed teacher, you could create a group and you could share all of your join information to Google Classroom in the group. That's the end of the content I had to share with you. I'm gonna hop back to the agenda just to make sure. Yep, great question, Mary. Um, one moment, I'm gonna scroll back up and get some questions. I do just wanna make sure just that I didn't miss an agenda item. I gave you your um, sandbox course. 
We talked about how to's um, with courses and groups. We were adding materials, adding a folder, and then I showed you a group, um, what that looks like. I'm gonna show the quick how to. We got one minute left, I'm gonna knock it out. Groups, create, oh, bleh, sorry, I clicked on courses. Groups, my groups, create a group. You all have the ability to do this. And then for your students, what's really great about it is when they log in, um, when they log into Schoology, then they just click on groups. And if you put an image, they're not gonna probably be in more than 12 groups either. It'll appear right there. Parent perspective, I'm gonna hop in that. When the parent logs in, when you post to your child, uh, or excuse me, to your group, the parent sees that update if the child is in your group. So you don't lose communication that way. So the best thing that you can do is once you connect to students in Schoology is post frequent updates because that is what a parent engages with first is updates. And it doesn't matter if I'm on one child, special thanks to Jackie Rowetter for letting me co-parent digitally her kid. And then I can toggle to my other child and I can see their updates. So make sure you have that empathy in your design and consider your parents and students at home. All right, I'm gonna come back up. It is 12 on the dot. For those of you who have to drop out of this, I will have links to this posted in your reading specialist group. And I'll also post a link in our sandbox um, course. I'll post those as updates to the training recordings so that if you wanna watch Lindsay's Deeper Dive and you were with me, you're gonna get a chance to do that. Just don't forget to go over to the agenda Click on the contact hours evaluation. Please complete this evaluation. Uh, make sure you name both Lindsay, Lenhoff, and myself as your trainers today. I'll take any questions for anybody who wants to stay past answer, and I will be answering these questions out loud. Uh, it'll be available in the recording later if you have to hop. I want to respect your time. All right. I'm just going to scroll back up. So in groups, you're adding to this, um, uh, no, the course, the sandbox course is different than a group. Um, and I think we kind of walked through that a little bit. But Mary, unmute if you have further questions on that question. Does it just copy or move out? Jude, could you unmute and tell me what you mean by that? How do you make it interactive for the students? Um, I would add clickable picture links. And I have a five minute training video that I can, um, I'm gonna put it here in the chat, but I actually, um, I'll give you the one on updates and then I'll give you the longer one on uh, clickable visual or click visual course design. So I'll give you the five minute video and the full training. Um, if anybody wants to unmute for a question while I pull this resource, please feel free. I just typed a question. So we have a lot of our small groups, like yeah. of anywhere from four to eight kids or whatever, small groups. Would you consider, should we make individual groups for ourselves to put those kids in? Or should we just do like one big group? Um, that is a really great question. I'm so glad you asked it. And I'm glad that I'm still recording. So let me copy this video link, drop it in the chat. Um, adding clickable images my, my thought is we would do separate ones in our you know as administrator because we're we might be assigning different things to the different small groups i want to make sure i show you the best answer for both of those things in courses and groups so let me show okay. you both answers so let's go with the scenario that you are like lindsay and you have partnered with a teacher and you're going to have um ownership in their course or um, you know, be a co-admin, that co-teacher environment. You can go into gradebook. I think it's great setup, right? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm going the wrong direction. You can go into members. So think of the kids in your class. And do you see this button at the top, add grading group? In a course, you can create your small groups. And then when you create materials, um, one thing that I didn't get a chance to talk to because my side was more technical, is like your tier one, tier two level interventions. We know that tier one intervention should go to the whole class in general. Um, and then we wanna have targeted interventions beyond that. So you can create grading groups where you provide materials and content just for those specific students in a course. That's the benefit of a course. 
Um, and it's why I really encourage reading specialists to team up and co-administer their ELA classes with the, with the teacher of record. I think that is the best case scenario. However, if you cannot do that, if you, are, if you have to use a group, I'm gonna go into your group for that. You can create your um, resources. Whoops, am I not in a group? My bad. Let me go into a sandboxy group. Uh, I'll go into this one, they'll forgive me. <laughs> These are the tech teachers. All right, if you have to operate out of a group because you're not gonna co-administer with the teacher, you still have the resources tab where you can have collections, but the, the difference here is you can't assign individually. So assigning is a course function. Sharing is a group function. So what I would do is create a folder that says, you know, um, when I did first grade, Amy, Amy worked, I worked with Amy years, uh, several years back now, and I taught first grade and I had my groups and I had um, stars, the rainbows, or whatever. I had my groups named for something cute for first grade. In case you can't tell, I like cute. Um, but they were they were my tiered groups, and they were based on their need and their reading interventions. I would make a folder for each of those groups in the resources, and then I would have those targeted um, activities, materials, whatever you will, in those folders. So that's how I would approach it from a course or a group perspective. Um, I'm going to scroll back up to the next question I missed, but please feel welcome to shout out a question. I'm just going to make sure I'm not supposed to be in another meeting. Thankfully, everybody's been very forgiving when we run late because we're all booked back to back. Go ahead, um, unmute and ask a question. I'll make sure I also get the ones in the chat. What's that shortcut to get the sandbox back open? This is why I yep. have issues with Schoology because I can't remember the shortcut codes and nothing opens right. Okay, so um, Amy, I would be, um, it would be my pleasure to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with you to help your navigation work better. Um, a lot of times I hear you share your frustrations, and I know exactly what you're talking about, but you and I don't have the shared time and space for me to address your specific question for you. And, you know, I would love to just um, take a one-on-one -on -one with you. We can either record it so you can share it out with your colleagues if you want to later, or just to address some of your concerns because I know what an active presence you are in the district and the invaluable resources you provide. So I'd love to help make your experience better. Um, most of the time when I've heard your comments, I've known, you know, I've known in the back of my head and wanted to share out, like, I know how to help you with that. So I'm, I'm just putting it out there. If you wanna schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me, um, I would love to support the work that you're doing and make your job easier and more efficient so that more people can benefit from the resources you provide. Can you just give me that code, it's, that shortcut? It's right there. Yeah, it's right there. In the chat. Okay. At the bottom. I'll have to get back in. Yeah. I have to get back in. Could you repost the um, evaluation? I actually got off and then didn't yep. get. No worries. You know what I'll do? I'll post the whole agenda um, and the evaluation link separately just to make it easy. So, agenda. And I'll link right to the evaluation link for you as well. Whereas, Mary, when we're moving um, resources around, are we just copying them? How do we know that we're not permanently moving someone else's resource, like in a Google Drive or something? So, um, well, that question has a couple of different answers. So, oh, good. I'm good for until 1230, guys. So I will, I'm happy to stay on and answer as many questions as you have, um, but I'll keep recording this for the Q&A time so that others benefit from the answer. So I'm good till 1230. Um, let me go back to your question. First, let's address the concern that we could be altering other people's content. I know you guys don't wanna do that. Um, I'm gonna show you how it works in Schoology, course, group, and Google Drive. I'm gonna try to cover all your questions. Ah. All right, I've got our sandbox course open and let me make sure nobody else joined that I need to make a admin. Nancy, you're now an admin. Oh. No, nope, cancel. Nancy, you're now an admin. And Katie, you are now an admin. So this, so your question, um, how do you know you don't uh, mess with anything that is somebody else's work? In a Schoology course, please stay in the folder you created. That's the simplest way to put it. If you work in the folder you create, then you know you're not messing with anybody else's. When you click on that folder, you can see at the top that I'm in Rosemary Jane Sandbox. It's that header right here. 
And anything I do in here is mine and I am free to drag and manipulate so that I can change things around. This is my space. So if I was Lindsay and I'm in the co-teaching situation and this is the gen ed classroom teacher, I might just know that I'm only editing information in my folder I created. But when you picked up resources from like the reading specialist uh, Schoology page, when you were yep. picking up resources from there, like, is it just copying them? Yes, you are making your own copy of that resource. So let me go to the reading specialist one. Um, that's not our school, it's in a group. And it is reading specialists right here. So I can pull them in right here. I'm not altering anything. I'm not deleting. Um, you guys don't even have editing, deleting rights on that group. So you have no worries um, about your curriculum groups or the district groups. Um, like this district page resources. You have no worries that you're gonna alter that. You're just pulling over a copy to your materials. Same with groups. Now groups, there's a, there's a caveat here. If you do create a group, like my group right here for technology teachers, I made them all co-admins or well, not all, but most of them co-admins because they really um, contribute to the body of the work in this group, right? This is a PD group. But let's just say it's you and a classroom teacher and that teacher doesn't want you to come into their Schoology course or doesn't feel um, maybe comfortable enough with Schoology. I don't know, there's, there's any number of reasons why that could be a barrier for you. I will say that um, in whenever I work with reading teachers, I always remind them that they should be partnering up with their reading specialist because you guys working together as a lockstep team is so important. But if you can't for some reason do that, when you create that group, remember I said you can go to groups, my groups and create a group, you can invite that teacher to co-administer with you. But just take caution, and that's why I said we set norms in the beginning, take caution that when you are co-administering a space, that you just go to the members tab, anyone who has that can alter the other person's content. Now, if they go in and delete your folder, the good news is you can go to the recycle bin, nothing's lost. I haven't deleted anything from this, so not a good example. But nothing is lost. So if somebody accidentally goes in, fumbles around, and accidentally <laughs> deletes your folder, you can still retrieve it. Um, the Google Drive question is a whole nother ball of wax um, that I don't, I, I kind of want to stay on topic for the Schoology um, questions pertaining to reading specialists because I know many of the district trainings didn't speak to your specific role and I want to make sure I get as many questions about your role and use of Schoology as possible. So I'm going to skip the Google class or the Google Drive question. Um, if we get to the end of questions and that's still hanging out there before 1230, I'll be happy to answer that. Hey Rosemary, I think the reason you're getting so many questions with that is right now that's where all our resources have been over the mm -hmm. past year. So I think that's why people are asking because they need to know how to pull over. Oh. Um, so that's why people keep asking. Thank you, Amy. That really helps clarify for me. So when you want to pull over from, and Amy, are you referring specifically to that reading specialist group? The, yeah, like um, all the problems of the day, all the foundations things, Spire, Read Naturally, all of those, I have folders in Google Drive oh, that are okay. shared with reading specialists. So for them to move them over, I think that's what they want to know about. Thank you so much for adding a little context to that question, Amy, that's perfect. Um, yes, you can, anything that is in Google Drive, you can also um, add to your Schoology materials. So if you are co-teaching, you can go right in the teacher's course, or if you have your own group, you can add them. And yeah, um, having access to Amy's materials in Schoology is crucial. Amy, I hope you will take me up on the offer for a one-on-one -on -one because I really wanna help these teachers get access to your materials. Um, Amy, is there anything that you could share directly? You, you know what? Probably from when we work together, I still have stuff. Yeah, let me share something with you right now. I'm going to share the um, Read Naturally materials or the Spire folder, I guess. So hold okay. on. Let me go do that. Yep. And then I will actually go ahead while Amy's doing that. I will get a space set up in your Schoology group for those materials to exist. I was going to say, I don't see a resource tab under materials. Yeah, there's not one on our on the sandbox thing. There's no resource tab. So, so there's no such, sure. so, yeah, there's no such thing as resources in a course. 
Um, a course is for delivering instruction and materials. A group is for sharing resources. So you access your resources through your groups and you pull them into your courses. In your course, you're either building materials or using materials that you pulled over from another group. Really great question. Because that's a key difference between a course and a group. Courses are for delivering instruction, content and communication, for connecting with families. Groups are for sharing and collaborating and accessing resources. Okay, so I just I just saw the option for import from resources. So that's how we yeah. do it. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I accidentally sent it to the sermon, so now it's to Rosemary oh, Jane. Just Rosemary at just Rosemary yep. at CPS. Yep. Yep, Thank I you. found it. Thank you, Amy. You're okay, let me. There it is. Spire. All right. So um, what I can actually do from here is I can just go to get a shareable link. And link sharing is already on. Perfect, Amy. So it, you've already got it set up for your reading specialist to share. So um, Amy, I'm going to have you help me through this a little bit because I'm going to add it right now. And I'm just going to add it as a link. Amy, what do you want this called for teachers so they know? Um, it, we can just call it Spire, or we can. I call would it say um, Spire materials, or all Spire Spire materials, because it's the full of everything we need. And Spire yeah, is all sure. caps, right? Yeah. Thanks. Yep. And so I have quickly added to your resources, and so this is another thing too. This is how quick and easy it is to add. All Spire materials is now in there. So this is kind of what I was also showing with you, uh, sharing with you guys, that nothing you're doing, none of the work you've done has to be um, lost or can't be accessed. It can all be accessed in here. But by adding these type of things to our courses or the group, if you can't make a uh, join a course with a teacher, then you're giving parents direct access in that one location. So I'm gonna drill in one more level though um, I, Amy, can I, you tell me sort of like, what yeah, is, is we're, I'm here? making packets that we're going to want to be able to share. And we just made question stems to go with mm -hmm. every story that mm -hmm. I will put them in that Spire folder. So we have everything in one place. Yes. Um, how will we share those packets with individual kids? That is, uh, this is, this is a, a beautiful thing having you in here for these questions. Thank you so much. That's another great one. Can I have another question though. When you put the link on there though, when you click it, it, it reverts right back to Google Docs, does it not? Yes, yes. Let me let me be clear. In here, this group is not a student group. This is for you as a as a reading specialist. So first we're putting access to it. Um, I actually the reason I'm asking Amy this question um, is specifically to show how to share that content with students. So Okay, great. Amy, is there a file here that you would say is just a baseline 101? Every um, everybody should have that file in their classroom or for students. The readers are. If you go up to the reader tab, if you picked one of the um, student readers, if you open that up and just pick one of the, um, yep. it wouldn't really matter what level, and drop that because that's the readers the kids need. Perfect. Let me show you exactly how you would do this in Schoology. And then, Amy, I would love to get with you also, too, on just some things you can do with these readers to make it be so they're not opening in Google. Um, because we, we've had a big uh, issue raised for parents at home who have to access stuff from a mobile phone. And so just for future accessibility, Amy, I want to show you how to make, um, make a different, just a different version so it's not opening um, with Google Docs because parents have to then out, download Google Docs to their phone. And so I'll get with you later about that if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. But let's just take this. Let's say that this is what I wanted my students to read. Um, Amy, is it fair to say that, that when you're working with a student digitally that you actually give them this link and maybe you'd say read this or, or how does this work? Oh, I don't have the packets uploaded yet, but what'll happen is one, you'll have one of those packets, you'll have the question from, from the teacher manual, one of those stories, questions from the teacher manual. Um, so it'll be a packet 
that will be uploaded that that packet will need to go to that child. Okay, we can definitely do that. Let's for a moment just pretend that this is that packet yes, for, for training purposes. So all I would do is go up to share and then link sharing varies. So Amy, you're gonna need to make sure that these links are anybody, um, I would really honestly make them anybody with link can view, but if you wanna keep it restricted to students in a student account, anybody at CPS can view. I've been changing it to anybody can view so that parents can get to it as well. Yeah, and, we, and did you know- Especially when I make the packets, I will, mm -hmm. and drop those in, I will definitely make sure, and I will make it that they're not at a, I'm gonna make two, uh, a copy that we share with parents and then a master copy that don't anybody share with parents. Okay. So that doesn't so get changed. So I'm gonna lock down one version and then let the other version not have to be locked down. Okay, that's that sounds perfect. Also too, keep in mind that you don't have to go to the individual documents. You can apply a sharing rule globally to a folder and then everything in that folder gets that sharing rule. Right, but I'm gonna have some things in that folder that I want to have different sharing rules. Yep, so so look at this, um, let's look at this. So yep, let's that's say, what I do. Yep, let's say that the Spire folder, you want different rules, but then you, let's say you have student readers master, student readers whatever, apply yep. the rule to the folder and then everything in the folder gets that rule. Yep. So you don't, yeah, it's-, it's Yeah, it's that's what thing. I've been doing. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna grab this link and we're gonna pretend that this is the packet the students need. And I'm gonna copy. And I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna do two things. Um, Amy, later we'll probably um, get some, well, no, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna make a sample in our sandbox. So you guys can go and, um, honestly, I don't really care if you alter my sandbox folder, but you can view if you wanna go back and see what I did. What I actually recommend to teachers is that they either add an assignment in a course, or if you're in a group only, that you add it either as a discussion there is a lot of power in discussions, and I have done discussion boards with students as young as first grade. Um, I'm also working with a teacher at Montessori who does discussion boards with pre-K and K, um, but sets it up with like parent facilitation. So I would either add an assignment in a course or a discussion in a course or group, or you can even just add a page. I'm gonna go with the discussion. So I would name this um, uh, reading, this week's reading. I know I'm not doing best practices here. Okay, okay. always add in something, um, directions uh, for students. And Amy, we can work on making this a template that anybody can just add the specific links in, or you might even wanna add your, your, um, your own. Always student font should be bumped up, keep that in mind and then change your font, um, information for parents. All right, so you add your information. So you give them their direction, you give the parent the information, and then you link to that packet that Amy's creating. And then, so you'll call it um, this week's reading packet. I know that's probably not the best title, but you get the idea. So then if you make it a discussion, you can say, um, anything that you want, like students, and give them a prompt um, to engage dialogue. So this would be using a discussion. Bear in mind, probably if, if uh, Amy um, does like the way this is working, then she will probably just do um, page templates similar to my Google one. I can really see Amy, Amy kind of building it out like that so you can use it any way you want. You know me too well. I know, right? <laughs> So, because I know you like uniformity and consistency, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll we'll get together on that, Amy, so that we can make like maybe a best practice template, master template, and then you can run with it. Um, Perfect. And I'll go ahead and make one example packet so you and I can play with that when we're doing it. Oh, I'm already looking forward to this work with you. <laughs> um, so play around in your sandbox folders. And maybe um, Amy might be adding that. Here's what's cool, Amy. When you've added something awesome, go up here and go to edit and just throw that in as a, hey, everybody, check out my um, my sandbox folder. You can even add a picture of it if you want to play with some advanced features. Or because you're all in the course now, you can also post that as an update. So Amy, you can also say, 
hey, everybody, go into my folder. So you can do either one, but just make sure you celebrate one another. And when you do something awesome, share it out. Um, I, I'm doing some new work right now um, that is so exciting, but part of, one of the things I'm focusing on is celebrating you all and your success. So um, I'm a member of this sandbox uh, course that I built for you. So as you post those updates, I'll see them. Um, I might not check into the content updates, but consider that more your collaborative um, practice space. That's yours. You guys are all admins of it. All okay, right. Rosemary, I think we have a great plan and I see we have just like six minutes left before you have to go and maybe we need to just put this out there and then table it till you and I talk. Sure. Another thing reading specialists need to do we need to be able to have kiddos on Edge Elastic because um, we have a typing PDSA that I have actually made in, on Edge Elastic and it works for the kids. And that's where we've uploaded all of the third grade um, practice tests and things like that because it best mirrors much more so than Unify and those things. It mirrors um, the air in the tools and the manipulation and the visual presentation. Oh, yeah. So we want to make sure that any resource you guys use is easily accessible. Um, and and Amy just hit a really a lot of really important points there. Amy, we'll make that a priority. Okay. Meet. Okay. So I'm scrolling back up. You guys feel free to unmute because we've only got five minutes left and I don't want me to miss a question. Um, consider this an open mic time and let's just, you know, if somebody speaks at the same time, one of us will just back off. Think of it like popcorn mm -hmm. style. Okay. Share I have questions. a question. I have a quick question. So, and I'm sorry, I still cannot get the course to show up unless I do the link. How do I pin it to the, like, I have pretty pictures of all my other courses. How do I pin it? Yep. Um, let me, let me show you that. Thank you for asking that. I think I even said earlier, I'd show you and I forgot to. So thanks. If you go into courses, my courses, there is an option here. Um, it's a gray button called reorder courses. And what you can do is go down below the gray bar, or I guess a blue bar, and it says courses below this line will not appear in course drop down. But let's say that this is that reading. As a matter of fact, I'll drag it up since I just started working with you guys. I probably want to be able to access that myself. There it is. So I would grab that reading specialist course and just hold, I'm dragging it. I'm just holding my cursor down. I'm dragging it all the way up. Y'all, I'm in a stupid amount of courses. So, so does this, that mean- It will is, not take this long for you. <laughs> we can do that then, Rosemary, to any classes we don't need anymore as well. Oh, Amy, Just drop perfect the below point. that line. Perfect point. You need to be in every reading specialist training I do for, from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, if, you're, if you don't need to access it, drag it down below the blue line and it won't appear. Yeah. Perfect. And then when you click the drop down, now look at this, guys. I have my reading special sandbox course right here in my menu. I got nothing out of this. Oh, Felicia, did you say you got nothing out of this? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I, well, I think it was moving too quickly for me. And understood. Uh, I, I don't know if I if I got the admin part. Um, let yes. me look for you. Um, I oh. want you to, <clears throat> even if you leave this with no new knowledge, um, other than, oh, I've got some things I'm, I need to work on and try, I want to mm -hmm. leave you with this. You are supported in your work. Um, so what? let me give you a couple of additional support. And, and everybody in the group, you can do this for um, a teammate. If there's somebody who missed this, um, if they're in your building, you can do it. You can't do it outside the building. Let me know, and I'm happy to help. Felicia, which school do you work at? Rohill. Okay. Uh, Felicia Jones or Toller? Roberson. Oh, Roberson? Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible you're not affiliated with Roll Hill. Um, Felicia, I'm going to make it a point. I'm actually going to find you on chat so you're queued up for me. Can -E I? Uh, Is it F-E-L-C? How do I spell Felicia? I'm sorry. It's F-E-L-E-C-I-A. Ah, that's probably why I didn't find you. Hold on. I'm sorry. I, and what I'm what I'm saying is it's F-E-L-E-C-I-A. There you are. You have now been added, and I'm making you an admin. Felicia, you've added and been made an admin. 
I think and what happened, let, uh, yeah. I think yeah, what happened, me, yeah. Go on, let, I'm sorry. Let me leave you with this. Um, okay. Because we are we are drawing to uh, a point where I have to end the session. Everyone mm -hmm. in this session or any one of you listening to this later, um, I do. I talk fast and I had so much information. And then I also have this um, ridiculous level of enthusiasm for what I do. So I'm always really excited and talk really fast. Um, but we are here to help you. If any of you either in this session or later watching this recording feel like, holy wow, that was too much information and I'm overwhelmed, please reach out to me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the best way to reach me within the same day during work days is through Google Chat. This afternoon today, Felicia, I have my office hours open from one to three. So that's every Wednesday from one to three. Um, okay. And so you can hop in and get individual one-on-one -on -one questions answered. And so that you find me through Google Chat. So I'm going to show the best way to reach me or any member of my team. If you just go in Google to chat. Okay. You can just type my name in the upper left and I monitor my chat so closely. Um, it's, it's like that. It's, it's our new instant messaging. Um, and so during my work day, like you, I don't know if you saw it, but I have, I have like more than five unanswered. I may not get to you within the hour, but I'll get to you within the day. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You Thank are so you. welcome. I don't want you to feel like, um, you know, if you got nothing else out of this, then I'm not alone in this and there's more support coming, then that okay. that works for me. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, Felicia, any before you get off, I also think that once Rosemary and I talk and work out a, a couple more things that will help us in our job, like linking Spire, linking Edge Elastic and things like that. And then that we can come back and show you all. I think that'll help as well. So just keep that in mind that we are working to go deeper and to make sure that this is as user friendly as it can be. Rosemary, I think what happened with me was I went on to uh, the other course, then I had to get back into your course. And oh. so I'm, I missed some things as time yeah. was going on. So that's what really what happened. I'm missing things, but thank you both, Amy and Rosemary. Thank oh, you so you're much. You're most welcome. You are uh -huh. most welcome. My pleasure, truly. All right, I do have to hop um, to take care of something else. So I, if you didn't get your question answered, please find me between, my office hours are between one and three, but I have, um, oh no, you know what? My, my standing thing at one, I had a standing Q&A open with another group, but they canceled. So anytime between one and three today, find me on Google chat and we'll connect. Hey, Rosemary, um, yeah. people wanted to know whether the chat can be copied. And usually I just highlight, copy, and put it in a Word document or something. Can they, because they wanted to see some of the things you yep. commented on? I'm going to do you one better. And I'm going to let you know that on my YouTube channel, um, when I post this video link, um, and I'll show you an example so it's crystal clear, um, my playlist, it will be under um virtual uh professional development playlist but i'll have one for you but if you look at any one of my videos um here's what i do i put a link to anything i reference i put a link to the transcript um you can ignore my feedback form because i want you to use that office of the curriculum and instruction one um emily set this up for you guys so please don't use my contact hour form or you know if you're double reporting but you, um, as a matter of fact, I'll change it for you guys. So you can ignore that. I'll make sure it's your contact form. And then um, you get information. You can jump straight to the chat. And then I also go through and I hyper, I make sure that they're hyperlinks. So you'll get all of that in my recording. I hope that helps. All right. Well, with that, I got to sign off, everybody. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank this you. Afternoon. You guys. Um, I'm so glad that we scheduled a training specific to your role. Um, I think the role of the reading specialist is, um, it's, it's actually what I did my master's, my, my, I did a dual focus. And if I wasn't doing the job that I'm doing right now, I wanted to be in your shoes because of the important work you do. So uh, you have nothing but my respect, admiration, and in the role I'm in right now, all I wanna do is help you do what you do better. So, um, and easier for you. So thanks so much for attending my breakout session and we'll be in touch. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.